One of the greatest and coolest pieces of software ever written that I don't think gets the respect it deserves is SQLite. Many developers, especially web, act like SQLite doesn't exist or is a toy database only for toy projects and prototypes. And they overcomplicate their lives with other more complex solutions. They have no idea how easy their life could be and what they are missing out on. Small, fast, reliable. Choose any three. It's the famous SQLite catchphrase that as we are about to see isn't marketing speak. And it's actually true. And we are also going to learn how new products like Turso and Cloud31 are taking SQLite to newer heights and are going to make its usage explode. SQLite is the most used database in the world without a doubt, with over a trillion SQLite databases currently in use. SQLite is used by every iOS and Android device, by every Mac and Windows 10 device, and by every Chrome, Firefox, and Safari browser, as well as by tons of multimedia systems and IoT devices. Your browsing history is stored in an SQLite database, as well as the settings and preferences of your phone. SQLite is everywhere. Apart from being the most used database, SQLite may also be the single most widely deployed and used software component across all categories, according to the SQLite team. In terms of reach, it only competes with other libraries like LibP, and leave JPEG, which are the implementations for the .png and .jpeg image formats, and zlib, a compression library. That is crazy. Small, fast, reliable. Let's start with small. A main reason why SQLite is everywhere is because it truly and really is small. Databases like MySQL and PostgreSQL are client-server databases that need to run as a separate process, usually in a server with its own memory and disk. SQLite is the opposite of that. SQLite is an embedded database. Embedded meaning that the database is inside of the device, server, or smartphone itself. An SQLite database is a single file, self-contained and cross-platform that does not need a separate server, tons of resources or extra configuration to run. Which is why SQLite is perfect for offline-first software or for IoT devices. It is literally just a file. To open, read and write to an SQLite database, we only need the super tiny SQLite library, which is no more than 750 kilobytes. It is a beauty. Now let's talk about fast. Since SQLite does not need a separate server and is a single device, disk file, reading data from a file that is right next to your code is going to be faster than sending a database query over the internet to a server hosted in AWS and waiting for a response. With SQLite, there is no network latency between your code and the data. And to make it even better, some tests have found that SQLite can be 35% faster than if you were writing to the file system on your own using C functions like fread or fwrite. Amazing. And finally, let's talk about reliable. You would think that the team making SQLite a database used by billions of devices with trillions of active databases would be pretty big. Or since SQLite is open source, you could expect it to have thousands of collaborators from all around the world. None of those things are true. SQLite is developed and maintained by only three people. These three legends right here. And the best part, in my opinion, is that these three champions don't even need or want your or my help. SQLite is open source, which means you can copy the code and do whatever you want with it. But it isn't open contribution. This means they don't access accept patches or contributions from random people in the internet the way other open source projects would. According to them, this is to ensure that SQLite always stays in the public domain and does not become contaminated with proprietary or licensed content. It's also great for security. An open source project used by the whole world should be very careful with who is allowed to modify its code, which as we now know is a bigger deal than ever after the XZ backdoor that I made a video about before. About long-term support, the developers of SQLite have promised that they will be supporting SQLite until the year 2050, and that they will keep the code documented, commented, cross-platform, and backwards compatible. They also say they will keep it old school, so I would say that the chances of a rewrite of SQLite in Rust or Zig are pretty low. They will also keep the code fully tested, and this is what blows my mind the most about SQLite, how incredibly well-tested it is. As of today, the SQLite library consists of over 155 thousand source lines of code, which means lines of only C code, excluding blank lines and comments. That sounds like a lot, but it is nothing compared with the 92 million source lines of code that the test code and test scripts are made of. 92 million source lines of code to test 155,000 source lines of code. That is almost 600 times more tests than code. 
Amazing! SQLite has 100% branch test coverage, millions of test cases, out-of-memory tests, crash and power loss tests, input-output error tests, and more. It took a whole year of 60-hour work weeks for the creator of SQLite to get 100% MCDC test coverage. MCDC is a level of testing that is required for aviation software. Can you imagine spending a whole year of 60-hour work weeks writing tests? I would die. Something that you may find interesting about the developers of SQLite is that they follow something called the rule. The rule of SQLite was written by the founder of SQLite, who believed that anyone who follows it will live a happier and more productive life. It is a set of 72 rules that the founder and all current SQLite developers have promised to follow to the best of their abilities. I'm not going to list all the rules here. Many of them are about Christ and God, and other ones are very practical advice I like. Like for example, love fasting, be not addicted to wine, be not proud, be not lazy, shun arrogance, respect your seniors, and love your juniors. Pretty cool. As we know, there is no silver bullet. Everything has its limitations and compromises. And SQLite, despite its awesomeness, is no exception to this rule. There are limitations to it and cases where you shouldn't choose it over other solutions. Before we get into that, if you like the way I explain things and you want to learn to code with me for free, after you finish watching this video, click the link below. There you will find free courses on JavaScript, Python, React, React Native, Go, Dart, Flutter, and Next.js, among many others for free. We have many free courses for all levels, from beginners to advanced. So click the Link below after finishing this video and I will see you there. For the most part, SQLite and other databases like MySQL and PostgreSQL don't compete directly because they do different things. SQLite is focused on being a simple and efficient data storage for applications and devices, while MySQL and PostgreSQL focus more on concurrency, scalability, and centralization of enterprise data. Where they do overlap though is on the web. Many developers know and acknowledge how great SQLite is for many of its use cases, but they are sleeping on the fact that SQLite can be a perfectly good choice as a database for their apps. Can SQLite be used to build something on the scale of Netflix or Twitter? Of course not, and we will understand why soon. But for small and medium traffic websites, it's completely fine. The team says that SQLite can handle websites that get fewer than 100,000 hits per day. So basically 99.9% .9 of all websites. And they say that that is a conservative limit since they have seen SQLite handle websites with 10 times that amount of traffic. One reason why most of us don't use SQLite is because everybody thinks they are building the next Instagram and they believe they will for sure get more than 100,000 hits per day. So they want to choose a database that can handle the load. I respect that mindset and I've been there. But as Donald Knut says, premature optimization is the root of all evil. Another reason for not using SQLite is that in older versions you could have concurrent reads but not concurrent writes. This means that many processes could be reading from the database all at the same time. But when it was time to write to the database, SQLite would lock the database until the write was complete. In most cases and for most websites this isn't a big deal because writes happen very fast so the database is not locked for too long. And SQLite drivers could always retry after waiting for the log to be lifted, which will add just a few extra milliseconds to the operation. Having said that, since version 3.7, SQLite comes with a write ahead log or while option that makes readers not block writers and writers not block readers, making it possible to read and write concurrently. This does not mean that multiple writers at the same time are allowed. They can queue up and write one by one, which again, for most use cases will be absolutely fine. But if you need more concurrency than that, then SQLite is not for you. If you have massive amounts of data, then SQLite is also not for you. An SQLite database can have a maximum size of 281 terabytes, which is a lot, more than enough for most websites. But Still, if you are dealing with more than that, I'm happy for you, but SQLite is not gonna work. Apart from everything we have seen, the most compelling reason against using SQLite is that you shouldn't use it if you have multiple servers. Although Turso and D1 fixed that, but that is for later. SQLite is an embedded database. It is meant to be a file embedded next to your application in the same server. If you have multiple servers and you want them all to talk to the same database, you will have to share the SQLite file over a network which is suboptimal. So if you have serverless applications or architectures with multiple servers all pointing to the same data source, databases like MySQL or PostgreSQL will be a better idea. Or maybe an even better idea would be to use Turso or Cloudster D1. Cloudster D1 and Turso are two new database services that bring SQLite to the serverless world. They allow you to use SQLite from multiple servers, removing the biggest reason why people don't use SQLite. Now you can talk to your SQLite database from a Next.js server action, an AWS Lambda function, or a Cloudflare worker. Cloudflare D1 is built on SQLite and 
Turso is built on LibSQL. LibSQL is an open source fork of SQLite that is open to contributors. Their goal is to extend SQLite using Rust by adding more features like turning it into a distributed database and giving it an asynchronous API. Both Cloud31 and Turso take advantage of the fact that SQLite databases are just files. Because of this, they can replicate your database the way a CDN replicates a file across the network, which is super cool. You can have your database replicated all around the world, so you can reply to your user's request to the database that is closest to them. And both Cloud31 and Turso will handle synchronizing the data with the replicas for you. And again, because SQLite databases are just files. This also makes it easy for you to build multi-tenant platforms where every user has a separate database. You can build something like Shopify or Squarespace, where you create an SQLite database file for every one of your users, which means you can scale to tons of databases and your users will be able to export all their data if they want. The starting plan for Turso gives you 500 databases, 9 gigabytes of total storage, and 1 billion reads and unlimited embedded replicas. Cloud31 supports up to 50,000 databases per account with a file limit of 10 gigabytes and you get 5 million reads and 100,000 writes a day with 5 gigabytes of storage for free. I could make a longer video of how Turso and Cloud4D1 work, but I'm going to leave it there because I don't want you to think this is a sponsored video. I'm genuinely impressed and excited by the tech. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like it, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. Your subscription means a lot to me. It motivates me in creating quality content every week. So please don't forget to hit that button. Thank you for watching as always. And let me know in the comments if you would like me to make a course about SQL. Onjana kamsahago, sarang hamida. See you on the next one. Dame bye bye.